So this video is about viral induced wheeze and it was by far the hardest one of the three that I've made because there's hardly any guidelines about this specific topic and much less research than on asthma or bronchiolitis. So by the end of this session I'd like you to be able to feel confident assessing a wheezy preschooler and I'd also like you to know how to apply the principles of asthma management um, but also know that the evidence is a bit limited with regards to preschoolers with wheeze. So the key points are more than half of all children will have at least one episode of wheeze during preschool years, but most of these don't have asthma. Now, you want to still manage an acute presentation similarly to asthma with a burst of salbutamol, and don't forget that wheeze can still be other things like anaphylaxis. So the difficulty comes that we've got to try and figure out what happens in this these children that fall between these two categories. So on the left, we've got children with bronchiolitis. These are children under one. They've got a clear inflammatory condition rather than bronchoconstrictive condition, and they don't need any specific treatment apart from maybe oxygen. Then we've got children with asthma that we know have a clear bronchoconstrictive etiology to their disease, and therefore managed with bronchodilators and steroids. And then we've got a whole bunch of kids that kind of come in between. We're not really sure. They don't have a diagnosis of asthma yet. They seem to be a bit wheezy. They maybe respond to bronchodilators, but then often they don't go on to develop asthma. So what's that about? I mean, it's, it's just really confusing. And this is the category of children with viral-induced wheeze. So they've got a viral illness and they become wheezy, but um, the, you know, a lot of these kids don't have asthma. So as I said in the key points, half of all kids will have an episode of wheeze by age six, but most kids don't have asthma. And then even in preschoolers who develop recurrent episodes of wheeze, only a third of those will go on to develop asthma. So it's really um, not necessarily the same etiology as asthma. It's probably a diverse set of pathophysiologies and we're therefore lacking in guidelines and evidence of what to do about it. So with that said, we're still going to manage it the same as asthma with a couple of little modifications. So you give your six puffs, and I'm going to say it's just six puffs because they're probably under the age of six. Give your six puffs of subutamol, virus spacer, always virus spacer still, and then you're going to assess for response. Now, if children do not respond at all to bronchodilator therapy, that might just mean that you, the etiology is not bronchoconstrictive and it's not really worth then putting them on regular salbutamol and giving them a full burst. But if they seem to respond, it's worth continuing with your full burst. Give them the three doses uh, every 20 minutes for the first hour and then see how they go. And then you do your stretch just like asthma. So you see how long they then last without needing any more bronchodilator therapy and um, then you see if you can discharge them. And people that can be discharged are uh, children that are look reasonably well, that don't have risk factors for severe disease, so they're not premature, they don't have chronic lung disease, um, and they don't come from a, a home with cigarette smoke, and they come from a place that they can get back to hospital easily. And then they don't have severe disease, so they don't have se severe work of breathing, hypoxia, uh, you know, they're able to feed, they look okay from the end of the bed. All of the same kind of things that uh, you'd use to assess an asthmatic child. Steroids are just a bit of a minefield. It's really unclear whether children at preschool age should get steroids. The, there was a huge paper in, uh, I think, 2009 or something in the New, New England Journal of Med Medicine by um, Panica, who basically said there's no point giving uh, steroids to preschoolers because it doesn't make any difference. But you still find that some people do. And I think probably it's a reasonable question to ask if you're admitting a child, you know, if they're unwell enough to need admission, maybe they do need steroids at one to two milligrams per kilo. Again, if they're well enough to go home, they probably probably don't need steroids. So probably take a similar approach to asthma, but feel free to ask a senior or a paediatrician because you find a lot of variation in practice here. Don't forget anaphylaxis. Keep harping on about this every video, but it's fatal to miss. So if a child has eaten a new food or had a new medication and then their wheeze has developed shortly after that, you've got to treat it as anaphylaxis. Give them the adrenaline. Then you can always treat it as asthma if it turns out it was, it was you know, viral induced wheeze and not anaphylaxis. Don't forget inhaled foreign body. Obviously, it becomes less and less likely the older a child is, but in the younger children, it's still important to think about. So key points are half of all children have an episode of wheeze. Remember that but most of them don't have asthma and they never develop asthma. Manage the acute presentations of what you think is a viral induced wheeze, uh, similar to asthma, so you're giving them burst bronchodilator therapy, you might give them steroids if they need admission, but you might not go down that full route of the burst if they're not responding at all to bronchodilators. And don't forget, it could be anaphylaxis, and if you're not sure about it, treat that. <laughs>